Hello there, I am teacher Mia Marina Vigil. How are you today? I hope you're fine and learning well despite of this pandemic. Kindly find a comfortable place where you can focus, get your modules and the writing materials. So are you ready? Our topic for today is all about the particle nature of matter, focusing on matter and non-matter. The purpose of this lesson is for you to distinguish matter from non-matter. Kindly get a weighing scale if you have it at home. And let us weigh your ball pens. Kindly put your ball pen on the weighing scale. Let's see, do the ball pen have measurable mass? Very good, it has a measurable mass. Does it occupy space? Great, the ball pen occupies space. The next one is you are going to bring out your cellular phones or any torch you have at home. Let's turn on the light. Let's observe the light coming from it. Does the light occupy space? Does the light have measurable mass? None. Very good. So since the ball pen have a measurable mass and it occupies space, we can say that it is a matter. However, we observe that the light coming from the torch or in your phone does not occupy space and don't have a measurable mass. Therefore, we conclude that it is non-matter. Not everything around us is matter, nor made up of matter. Every day, we also encounter different phenomena or events that are non-matter. After this lesson, you are expected to Number 1. Distinguish matter from non-matter. Number 2. Value the importance of matter and non-matter in our daily lives. And the third one is to create digital artwork depicting matter and non-matter. Let's find out how matter begins. Do you know who these scientists are? What are their contributions to matter? In the first picture we have, very good, it is Thales of Miletus, and according to him, all things came from water. And in the next picture, we have Leucippus. He is a Greek philosopher who conceived the idea of indivisible units called atoms, meaning uncut. The third scientist is Democritus. He believed that any piece of matter could be divided and subdivided into very small particles. But this process ended up at some point when a piece is rich that could not be further divided. The next picture, we have Aristotle. He is a Greek philosopher who challenged and rejected the idea of atomism by Democritus. The last scientist in the picture is John Dalton. He is an English scientist who performed experiments with gases. His results convinced him that matter was made up of tiny indivisible particles and these are called atoms. Example of matter are smoke, water, 
and mobile phones. Well, non-matter is a phenomena or event that is a form of energy itself. Examples are northern lights, light from torch, and also sound. In our next activity, we are going to create a digital artwork depicting matter and non-matter. You can make a digital painting or drawing or computer-generated arts. Identify the matters and non-matters present in your work. For example, in TLE, we're in You Are Baking. The heat coming from the oven is considered non-matter. And all the dry and wet ingredients of the baker is considered matter. Another example is when you are beautifying your garden. The tools you use in planting are matter. And the light coming from the sun is an example of non-matter. Now it's your turn to make your own. Nature of Matter This lesson talks about the nature of matter. Anything which has mass and occupied space is known as matter. Everything around us, for example books, pens, pencils, water, air, all living beings, and others are composed of matter. All of them have a specific mass and they occupied space. Matter can exist in three physical states. They are solids, liquids, and gases. The constituent particles of matter in each of these three states can be represented as shown. In solids, these particles are held very close to each other in an orderly fashion, and there is not much freedom of movement. In liquids, the particles are close to each other, but they can move around. However, in gases, particles are far apart as compared to those of solid or liquid state and their movement is easy and fast because of such arrangement of particles different states of matter have the following characteristic solids have definite volume and definite shape liquids have definite volume but no definite shape they take the shape of the container in which they are placed gases have another definite volume nor dominant shape they completely occupy the container in which they are placed. These three states of matter are convertible with changing the conditions of temperature and pressure. On heating, the solid usually changes into the liquid, and the liquid on further heating changes into gases or vapor. In the reverse process, gas on cooling liquefies to the liquid state, and liquid on further cooling freezes to a solid. At the microscope or both level, matter can be classified as mixtures or pure substances. This can be further divided as shown. Mixtures are of two types, homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Many of the substances present around us are mixtures. Sugar solution, air, and coffee are all mixtures. A mixture can be a homogeneous or a heterogeneous mixture. In a homogeneous mixture, the components are completely mixed with each other and its composition is uniform throughout. Sugar solution and air are the examples of homogeneous mixture. On the other hand, in heterogeneous mixture, the composition is not uniform throughout and sometimes the different components can be observed. For example, mixtures of salt and sugar, grains of different kind, along with some dirt pieces of heterogeneous mixture. It is worthwhile that the components of mixture can be separated by using physical methods and picking distraction, crystallization, distillation, and others. Pure substances. Pure substances have characteristics different from the mixtures. 
They have fixed composition, whereas mixtures may contain components in any ratio and their composition are variable. Copper, silver, gold, water, glucose, etc. are some examples of pure substances. Glucose contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a fixed ratio and thus, like all other pure substances, this has a fixed composition. Also, the constituents of pure substances cannot be separated by simple physical methods. Pure substances can be further classified into elements and compounds. An element consists of only one type of particle. These particles may be atoms or molecules. Sodium, copper, silver, hydrogen, oxygen, and others are some examples of elements. They all contain atoms of one type. However, the atoms of different elements are different in nature. Some elements, such as sodium or copper, contain single atoms held together as their constituent particles, whereas in some others, two or more atoms combine to give molecules of the same element. Thus, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen gases consist of molecules in which two atoms combine to give their respective molecules. When two or more atoms of different elements combine, the molecule of a compound is obtained. Examples of some such compounds are water, ammonia, carbon dioxide, sugar, etc. Water molecules are comprised of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Similarly, a molecule of carbon dioxide contains two oxygen atoms combined with one carbon atom. Thus, the atoms of different elements are present in a compound in a fixed and definite ratio, and this ratio is a characteristic of a particular compound. Also, the properties of a compound are different from those of its constituent elements. For example, hydrogen and oxygen are gases, but the molecule they make up, water, is a liquid. It's interesting to know that hydrogen burns with a pop sound and oxygen is a supporter of combustion, but water is used as a fire extinguisher. Moreover, so a compound cannot be separated into simpler substances by physical methods. They can be separated by chemical methods. For your next activity, which is whom matter or none matter, the objective of this activity is you should be able to identify examples of matter or non matter in your home state what matter or non matter you have chosen and its importance in our daily lives by continuing these phrases by choosing matter or non matter is blank i know that i know First, I know. In addition, I know. Finally, I know. Now you know something that I know. For example, my choosing matter is food. I know that I know it is matter. First, I know it is essential. In addition, I know it gives us energy. Finally, I know its importance. Now you know something that I know.
Well done, great eight learners. I'm so glad that you have understood our discussion for today. Remember, answer all the activities in your mentions and also post assessments. I hope you learned a lot from our lesson. Once again, this is Teacher Mia. Thank you for listening.